Hello and welcome back and that is right today we want to discuss the things I love and the things I hate about this the Unify UNAS Pro. I'm going to give you five reasons why this is a damn great NAS system but I'm also going to give you five reasons why it might need a little bit more time in the oven and without further ado let's crack on with number one. This is something that really blew me away and it was something I only discovered really close to the launch of this device but the MSRP or the RRP or basically the old lolly is $499 and this is a 7 bay NAS with a quad core CPU, 8 gig of memory and 10G on board that includes the NAS software and no additional licenses. Let me put that into perspective, $499 is phenomenal value compared to the likes of Synology and QNAP, something I've covered in another video, when the closest I could get to these was either small compact 4-bay NAS devices at that price point and even similar rack mount devices with the same architecture as this were getting closer to $800 to $1,000. This on the other hand is $499 with all of those bells and whistles and no licenses. Fair play Unify, fair play. <laughs> Unsurprisingly, as this is a Unify product, it's actually really simplistic and easy to use. Notwithstanding, you've got the full Unify aesthetic there on the main UNAS drive user interface there and the whole UNAS OS. On top of that, on the UNAS Pro there, you've got the LCD panel that allows you to control the system ad hoc and a lot of different configuration and information and control is presented there. But you've also got a great mobile application that can utilize Bluetooth, can utilize Wi-Fi connectivity. Ultimately, it allows you to control this device easily, securely, and more importantly, conveniently. This one really surprised me when I first heard about this, rocking out the gate is their first NAS solution. You don't need a UI.com account. You don't need to sign up or sign your TNC away on any Ubiquiti or UI.com related accounts. You can set the whole thing up offline. You can set up localized credentials, admin and non-admin, of course, super user and non-super user, read only, read and write. All of that can be done without a UI.com account. There are limitations, of course. You're not going to be able to access their relay service to access the device remotely and there's a few other bits and bobs that the majority of the system's configuration hardware and software can be used completely offline and without a ui.com account Modular updates. This is a small thing, but definitely something they've nailed down at the beginning when a lot of brands actually added this to their systems 5, 10, 20 years down the road. Modular updates allows you to not only allow for a 24-7 system to institute and action updates when it's best suited to you but can actually make them a great deal more incremental so you can go for stable updates re uh, release candidate updates even some early access updates if you choose but moreover you've got the system network attached storage os and then sub applications like the drive application have their own apps updates which again break down into release schedule stable early access and more and all of that is configurable so you can set it up in case you don't want the system to go offline when it's inconvenient to you globally have the system set up so that security updates are the most important updates action immediately obviously constituting a restart on the system or just the ones related to individual apps and services like drive can be actioned on your schedule And as if it's not become abundantly clear enough, Unify slash Ubiquity have really nailed down the fundamentals on this device. It could be argued that a lot of NAS brands are rocking out with more software features and updates right now, 20 years on, more on that later. But at least for their first release at their entry into the world of NAS, they have nailed the fundamentals. A file folder, um, accessibility via the web browser, and a few uh, local security kind of administration tools as well with that enterprise identity stuff. On top of that, snapshots are handled beautifully well. I would argue almost better than any other brand I have dealt with in the way they deal with snapshots, the configuration of snapshots, the restoration of snapshots, the locking of snapshots, being able to back up to a cloud service, back up a configuration files straight out the gate via that UI.com account stuff, of course. Then you've got the ability to create shares very conveniently and I would argue very snappily as well for a system that is arguably 
really quite modest in its hardware, it does so much with that software and does feel responsive at all times with NAS to NAS backups and again, NAS to cloud backups as well. Beyond that, RAID functionality straight out the gate and the system just works. Yes, it's nailing down fundamentals more than anything else and hopefully we're seeing them build on those foundations, but I just wanted to give real credit to them nailing the fundamentals so damn well. But frankly, some things about this device are going to rub you up the wrong way. And although we are going to have to give them a little bit of credit that this is their first NAS release, this is effectively right out the gate right now, and they're going to build from these foundations. You know, you might be buying this today, so you need to know what are the downsides of getting this solution right now. So unfortunately, let's crack on with number one. I've already alluded to this earlier on, but the hardware on this device is, frankly, a little underwhelming when you look at the rest of the NAS market for the last few decades. That quad-core CPU is an ARM-based processor there, which means you lose out on some of the capabilities of, say, a more aggressive AMD or an Intel-based x86 processor there. Um, the 10 GBE, there's only one port there. There isn't two 10 Gs. That secondary one, the first one's SFP, but that second one is a copper 1 gig. It's not great. I know you could argue that seven hard drive base there was never really going to oversaturate a 10G anyway, but nonetheless, I could have put SATA SSDs in there. I might have wanted failover, or I might have wanted priority and quality of service on individual ports. Something not really open to me on this system architecture the way it is. Also, there's no redundant power supplier option. It's only got one PSU inside. Now, you can take advantage of UPS's big power backup system, but that is an uninterruptible power supply. It, it, you know, it's a UPS. But a redundant power supply for me is way more desirable because it's one thing to say if there's no power, it's good to have a battery backup. And you're right, you could just get um, a redundant uh, a UPS anyway. But a secondary PSU in 24-7 utilization on rack mount devices is very, very common. I'm surprised it's not here. Ultimately, the hardware is all right. And again, it's their first entry device. But I've got to say, in terms of the hardware, even if you factor in the value point of that 499 price tag, it's not exactly going to blow your socks off. Talking about expandability on day one of this system's release may seem churlish to some of you, but I've spoken to enough IT professionals that when they buy a solution, not just NAS, if they need down the line to think about scalability three, five, ten years, they need to factor it in on day one so they don't get locked into an architecture three, five, ten years down the line. And this system, at least at launch, doesn't have much in the way of scalability. There's no official expansion devices. So the seven bays is what you see is what you get. On top of that, there's no ability to upgrade that memory. I mentioned it earlier on. Eight gig is your limit. There's no PCIe upgrade slots there to upgrade. There's no NVMe slots to upgrade there internally. It doesn't really have much. It doesn't even have USB ports. You can't scale it out over time very, very easily. Now, whether you can multi-stack all of them and run them with some as slave expansions has yet to be revealed. Maybe that's on their roadmap. But at the very least right now, there is no real long-term scalability, at least at launch with this device, that I can see. I know this isn't a criticism that a lot of you are going to get behind, but some of you definitely will. You can only create a singular storage pool inside this device. What that means is, is all of the storage that you've got inside there, whether you put in just one drive or several and add more down the line, you've only ever got one pool. From that, you can create multiple little containers of storage in those shared drive areas, create folders, and it does a really great job of silent vol volume manipulation in the background, but nonetheless, only been able to create one pool when I definitely, definitely, definitely know there are users that buy six, eight, 12 bay devices so they can have separate pools so they can prioritize different storage media. Say, for example, one built up of SSDs, one built up of slower but larger hard drives. That is a thing, and it's not something, at least at launch in the UNAS software, that you can do right now. This is another criticism that I think doesn't affect everyone but will definitely be raised and it's the fact that this system does not allow for the Unify's premium surveillance platform to be installed upon it. That is Unify Protect. Now Unify Protect is available on a myriad of different UNVR systems from Unify. Hell, one of the ones up here, the Dream Machine system, this allows me to manage my network and has storage there for me to install the Protect application on it. But I can't do that on this. Now again, this is probably going to be one of those things they change later when they maybe tweak, maybe troubleshoot and ultimately bring Protect over 
to the NAS system. But at least now we'll launch, it doesn't look like there's any surveillance way to take advantage of the system other than maybe using it as a synchronized backup for your existing Unify Protect system. And this last one you could probably already guess, there is a lack right now of AAA plus features, or at least what I would call AA plus features. They nailed the fundamentals and they've already got applications in the rest of the unified catalog of applications that they could potentially pull over. But this NAS does not support containers. There's no Docker deployment there, which means I'm not gonna be able to use third party apps like Plex or smart home stuff and integrate it in. On top of that, there's no OS client apps right now at launch for you to synchronize beyond mapping drive. There's the identity tools and some of the Unify management applications. But when it comes to simple drive sync tools for everything that happened in the background or client tools that many of the other brands, to be fair, that have had 20 years in the biz currently offer, none of those are available. There's no multimedia tools. There's no third party apps. It's a very locked one party system there. There's no virtual machine deployment. Hell, there's no synchronization with Premier, Google Workspace, and Office 365. There is domain um, connections there, and you know, some of that ACL stuff very likely, but there isn't really the integration towards those virtual uh, PAAS and SAAS platforms with this system. And the inability to host some of those virtual environments is definitely going to feel very limiting compared to some of the other rack mount server solutions from the likes of Synology and QNAP. Bottom line, we're talking about a device that has just launched, and I'm sure Unify are going to throw a lot of the old wonger at this whole platform with new solutions down the line and an ever-evolving platform. What that means is, right now, if some of that fully featured stuff is a deal breaker for you, this may not be the time to hop on this system. But if you're looking for something to integrate into an existing Unify ecosystem, if you're looking for something that nails the fundamentals this is a great pick and at 499 it's very hard to argue with that price point time and time and again but what do you guys think link to the description of the other videos we've been making in the last week or so on the Unify NAS device there the massive review way longer than this one along with comparisons against Synology and QNAP and a setup guide just around the corner apart from that thank you so much for watching there's also links to all the products that I've mentioned today so if you are going to go to those stores and this video has been helpful make sure those two things are true in the description use those links it results in a small commission to me and Eddie here at NAS Compares and it allows us to keep doing what we do thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time.